today's talk all about? Well, today's talk is all about how to connect with your customers using your story. Because story is such a vital part of everything we do in life. I mean, it's the thing that connects us. It's the thing that connects us in our relationships, in our societies, in our communities, in our beliefs, in our businesses. But it's a really powerful part of story, which is what we use to connect with our customers. And there are really three stories that we need to master to be able to do that. And every story that you tell your customers has to have a specific purpose. It has to have a, a purpose which is to make the customer take the next step. Seth Godin in, um, has written many times that the purpose of any content is to get your reader, your audience, your consumer to consume the next bit of content. And that bit of content might be your paid products and services. And if they bought from you once, the intention of the service that you give them the first time is that they buy from you again later down the line. So every bit of content, everything we do, every story we tell is to take our customer on one more step on their journey with us. And if you have a business where your customer relationships are going to last for many years, then every time you serve your customer, it's always to get them to take the next step to move forward with you because that's what it's all about. So the purpose of Recorded is to actually move the customer forward. So what are these three stories then that you need to, to master to be able to really connect powerfully with your customers? Well, the first story is your personal story. It's a story about you, but it's not just any old story about you. It has to be a story that's relevant to the business and relevant to your customers. Because if it's just a story about, you know, you nice, had a nice holiday, and blah, 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 and then you go off and start talking about something to do with business and there's no relevance between the two, it's been a waste of time and you're probably gonna disconnect the customer. So your customer's, your story, your personal story has to be relevant and it has to be relevant. Good morning, Anna, welcome to the group and uh, welcome to your first Facebook Live on Wednesday. If you missed the first bit, don't worry, you can watch the recording later and catch up, but we are talking about how to connect with your customers through your story. So the first story is your personal story, that one about you and about your business and about how you got to where you are today. The second story is also vital because it's your customer's story. It's understanding what's going on in your customer's head. Now, one way of looking at that is your customer's complaint or your customer's problem. A very great friend of mine, Helena Holrich, she always talks about meeting your customers where their problem is at. And the problem is the story that's going on in the head that they have about their circumstances, their situation. So if somebody, if you, if you are, uh, uh, I don't know, let's, let's talk a bit about building for a minute. We were talking to our builders yesterday. If you're talking about buildings and, and doing building work for a minute, and you're the customer, you may be concerned about the new extension you have. That's what's in your head. You're thinking about that. So if somebody starts talking about loft conversions, and you're talking about a rear extension in your garden, they're going to miss the point. You've got to be relevant to the story that's going on in your customer's head. And then the final story is the story that most people forget about, and that's the bridge story. And that's the story that bridges from your story about you and your customer's story about them and brings it together so that you can actually connect them with your products and services. And if you get the bridge story wrong, then the customer's not going to come and take the next step because they're not going to know that your story related to their story, connected them together, and then led them to the products and services that you have in your business, which can transform their life in some way, which can contribute to them in some way. And there's some mistakes that people make, some really big mistakes people make. And the biggest one is they think the story is about them. You know, yes, of course, if I'm telling my story and, I'll, and a diff I tell different stories for different customers, and I'll come on to that in a minute, but if I'm telling the story, yes, it's about what happened to me and it's about my journey, but I'm not telling the story for me. I'm telling the story to relate to my customer, to connect with my customer. So the story has got to be relevant to them. And it may be a really lovely story. You know, I could tell a story about, actually, um, I did one last summer when Wendy and I were down in Cornwall. Um, we were going to go for a walk and we went to this cafe and we th they had these beautiful looking bacon baps. We thought, do you know what? Why don't we have one of those? Then we thought, well, actually, no, let's go and do the walk and then come back. And I noticed there was a sign that breakfast stopped being served at 11 o'clock. We said, oh, we'll be back by then. But we met some people on the hill and we came back down. And when we got there, it was 11.30. So I went up to the lady and said, look, could you, could you possibly still serve us the bacon sandwich? You know, really quite quietly. I said, Shh, don't tell anyone. And she said, yeah, yeah, but do you mind if I serve you outside on the tables? And I went, yeah, no, fine. 
and out came these beautiful bacon sandwiches. Now, that's a nice little story in its own, but the reason I told the story was I wanted to talk to people about how they set guidelines in the company that allow their staff to break the rules when they can see that they can do it. Now, she broke the rules because breakfast should have stopped at 11 o'clock, and she broke the rules by serving us and giving us and delivering a service to a customer without damaging anything else in the business. So the story was relevant, relevant to a business that I was talking to about how they set guidelines to their customers that they want to make decisions, how the, their staff are going to make decisions to serve the customers. So the bridge story has to be relevant. Now, if you don't include the customer in your story, it's like telling that sort of lovely fairy tale to your kids when you're you know, reading them a story at night and you don't include them in the story. You've got to include your customer in the story. So somehow, as you tell your story, you've got to engage their thinking about them. So you've got to start engaging them in being part of the whole journey that you're describing. And when, they get to, when you get to their story, really make that about them so they really feel part of it. Because then when you take the bridge story along, they're coming with you on the journey. Remember what Seth Godin said, the purpose of every piece of content is to get the consumer to consume the next piece of content, whatever that piece of content may be. So bringing them into the story takes them with you. Now, there's a myth really out there, which no, it wasn't a myth, maybe it was just a methodology of sales that it was all about products, features and benefits. You know, it's the features and benefits. It's got this many things and it'll go that fast. It's got that, it'll do this. All the dimensions and the physicalness of products was what was considered to be really important. How fast does it go? How many colors has it got? Which are important at a point, but they're not important necessarily at the engagement piece. Now, if you're talking to somebody who is a complete petrol head, then the numbers about the engine and the petrol consumption, etc., are going to be relevant. So, okay, you can include those into it. But really, the story has to be about the stuff around the features and benefits. And that means the pain points, the aspirations, the things that are important to the customer. Because ultimately, people buy from people. They don't buy the product. They buy it from somebody. And they buy because they trust, they empathize, and they connect with the person who's providing that product or service. And that can be a physical product, it can be an online product, it can be any product you like. And actually, telling the story online is really quite challenging. You have to really work hard to tell the story online. Hi Steph, great to see you on board today. So when you're telling the story, you've got to be thinking about engaging people and you've got to be thinking about giving them something that's not about features and benefits. So you've got to be able to make sure that when you're telling that story, you're really connecting with the person's story that's going on in their head. So how do you put this together? Well, first of all, you need to choose your story. Choose the story you're going to tell. Now, you've... I don't know how old you are. I'm 58, right? So I've got a wealth of stories going all the way back. When I talk to people who are uh, running around like headless chickens and are a bit confused about the direction of the business, you've got to choose the story that's relevant to the end game that you want to achieve, to the outcome you want to achieve. So when I'm talking to business owners about being um, overwhelmed or not sure of the direction they're going in, I have a story to tell for that. If I have... Um, people I'm talking to about engaging with their staff properly and getting the best out of the staff, I have a story that I can tell about that. If I have people who want to delegate effectively, I have a story to tell about that. And they are real, genuine stories from my life, from my experience, which I can tell because I lived it, I had it, and I can engage them with their problem, and then I can talk about how I can help that person to solve the problem that they've got. Remember, meet the person where their problem is at. Now, then you've got to research your perfect customer. So you've got to know what their story is. And it's got to be about them. It's going to be about their complaint. It's going to be about their concern. It's going to be about their problem. It's going to be about the issue that they're confronted with or the challenge they're setting themselves. Um, some of the most amazing people I've worked with in my life, it's, it's not so much they've had a problem. It's just they've set themselves the most ridiculous challenge and they want to go for it. And then you've got to design the bridge story. And the bridge story has got to be, you understand their story, you know what your story is, you know where you want to end up, 
and then you just bring those two together and that's the part that really takes a bit of time and consideration and thought. That's when you can weave in the features and the benefits and you can weave in the story and how you can help the person. That's where you start to bring them across into your world and how you can help them. And if you um, go onto YouTube, I'll put a link in here afterwards. I did a talk at the Guildford um, Business Hub uh, earlier this year. You can actually go and watch the talk I did there about this whole thing and it encapsulates, encapsulates the whole story and gives you this point about what it takes to create that bridge story and how you link them together. The bridge story has to be the story that inspires, motivates and engages your customer in taking the action that you desire, that outcome that you set out to achieve.